Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours, and Happy New Year. Uh, it's the first edition of 2024. Uh, today is January 4th, and this is the EU-US uh, version. Today we have myself, Kevin Martins, Mark Waite, and Bruno Varashtin. Uh, and on the agenda today, so uh, we had our LTS release back in December. Everyone thing went smoothly there. Uh, small update in the uh, 2023 recap post that we'll be that we're putting together now. Some notes on the contributor spotlight, uh, the contributor summit that's coming up at Fostum, uh, a few recent updates to Jenkins.io, uh, Google Summer Code 2024 prep, uh, the version documentation for Jenkins.io progress. Uh, sponsor attributions and, and um, setting sponsors up for Jenkins in general. Uh, and then a couple pull requests about integrating the Docker Compose into the Jenkins documentation and tutorials. Uh, is there anything else that needs to go on the agenda for today, Mark or Bruno, or does that cover everything for discussion? So we've got version documentation there. That's a good one because Chris has made really good progress with Vandit. And yep. uh, I think we, we're looking at next steps then. Um, sponsor attributions, yeah, I, I want to be sure we talk to that one as well because we've had changes as of January 1 in some of the sponsorships that I think justify an immediate change to our sponsor page even before the long term. So I want to be sure we talk about that one. Uh, okay. Integrating Docker Compose, yes, I want to be sure we talk about that one. So the, at least those last three on the agenda, very much for me. Great, okay. let's go. Okay, great. Uh, so then starting off, so again, Happy New Year. Welcome back, everyone. Happy to be here and happy to have you with us. Uh, we had LTS 2.426.2 released back on December 13th. Thanks again to Chris Stern for being the release lead. Uh, Darren, Pope, and Mark did a YouTube or live stream about what's new in Jenkins that day. Um, the following day, that's available on, our, on the YouTube channel. Uh, and the next LTS is going to be released on January 24th. Uh, it is 2.426.3. Uh, Chris Stern's also the release lead there as well. So thank you again for that. Uh, and progress on there is being done. Uh, so uh, just like last year, we'll have a 2023 recap blog post. Uh, the SIG leaders are putting that together now. And we're hoping that will be published by uh, late next week, early the week after. But um, yeah, we're aiming for the next week or so for that. Uh, for the contributor spotlight, so we uh, published Alex Earls back in December and took a short break due to the break for Jenkins LTS and just lower traffic. Um, we want to give Chris Stern's spotlight the attention and visibility that it deserves, so we pushed that back so that Chris Stern's will be the first spotlight we publish for the new year. Uh, Chris's spotlight will be published on the 10th of January, so next Wednesday, uh, and then everyone else was moved back one cycle as well. So. Uh, after Chris, Uli Hafner's spotlight will be published uh, and everything will continue from, from there. Uh, there was the page navigation uh, discussion that we've been having. Uh, it's been ongoing in the components pull requests, but essentially uh, whether or not the uh, Jenkins text logo should lead to Jenkins.io directly or the root of the URL that they're on. Um, so if we were to go to contributor spotlight, uh, that Jenkins text logo, if we are, it's not even available. Look at that. Oh, there it is. So yeah, so basically Jenkins the, uh, text logo leads to the root of contributors.jenkins.io. So if we were to go to Alex's page, it takes us right back here, as opposed to if we were on the Jenkins blog, for instance, this takes us directly back to Jenkins.io. Um, there's been discussion talking about the Kubernetes page uh, functions very similarly. Uh, Tim Jacome mentioned stating that, you know, it's leading to the root of the page you're on. So it makes sense in that regard. Um, and then uh, Gavin had mentioned that it's just a very specific function and that uh, to make the change, it's more involved than it might appear to be. Uh, so yeah, uh, more discussions being happening there, but uh, I'm on, I'm of the opinion that I think leading to the root of the URL you're in works. So for the time being, it's going to remain as it is. If anyone has a more compelling argument uh, against that, it needs to happen in that discussion, in that pull request, but um, we can examine it later at that point. Uh, for the Jenkins Contributors Summit, so um, really just excited about this. 
it's going to be happening on February 2nd, so the day before Fostum, which is the 3rd and 4th, the first weekend of February. Um, the meetup page is available for the event, so you can register, let us know that you're coming. Uh, the blog post that Jean-Marc Messin had written details a lot more about just FOSDEM in general and what the Contributor Summit is, uh, and a, you know, anticipating agenda for everyone that'll be there. Um, really excited. Uh, I'm actually happy to share that I'll be there this year, which is really exciting. I just got my passport in the other day, so I'm good to go. And uh, yeah, looking forward. Um, we're gonna have uh, we're looking to have the full team there. And I think right now it's looking pretty good for a lot of us, if not all of us. So um, just really excited to for that uh, to be happening soon. Uh, and FOSM is totally free. So if you're curious and in the area, just happen to be in Brussels, stop by, come on over. A few recent updates to Jenkins.io. Uh, so uh, Basil Crow submitted a pull request regarding the escape hatch that was added or introduced through a recent update. Uh, so that's been added and merged. Thank you to Basil for uh, implementing that and capturing that. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, Alexander Brandis did a uh, did some work recently to make sure that internal workflows are restricted to just Jenkins infra. Um, that is something that uh, was updated recently by GitHub. Uh, and that now it's we don't have to worry about uh, unnecessary emails and runs that we're not doing that we're not necessarily working on so this is one that i need to apply i get lots of these messages all the time so i think i've got to understand how he did this so that i can apply it to all sorts of other places and we and i think we may want to put this into the into the next generation of improve improve a plugin tutorial or into the contributing to open source document because the the annoyance that I suffer of getting these email messages from my forked repositories. Oh, this build failed. This build failed. This run failed. It's just obnoxious. And getting if this actually works in these those other places, it'll it will save time for me and for other Jenkins developers. So this one is this one was particularly nice. I just haven't had time to apply the technique to all the places where I get spammed right now with run failed. Same for me. Yeah, same. I've been getting a few uh, more recently than anything else. So yeah, uh, need to apply it as well myself. Um, but yeah, really, really fantastic. Uh, thanks again to Alexander for taking care of that, implementing that and uh, getting that in there. So uh, really nice to see. Uh, and then the last uh, recent update I had was a contribution from a new contributor by, by the name of Shivan Pandey. Uh, so just how to list installed plugins and their respective versions. Um, great work. There was some feedback here between Mark and Shivam, as well as I thought I saw someone else, but, um, yeah, just thank you very much, Shivam, for uh, contributing, stepping up and adding some stuff, some content here. Um, yeah, really great. And then now we have that instruction available as well. So just another uh, positive for Jenkins.io and the documentation overall. Uh, Next up, so Google Summer of Code prep has been uh, started, been working on. Uh, we've published a call for mentors blog post as well. Um, and then uh, we did have the mentor roundup in December. Um, Bruno, Mark, any notes on uh, Google Summer of Code prep, how things are looking there, um, or anything that you want to note here? I think we'll have another meeting uh, in January or maybe early February regarding uh, GSOC, but I just can't remember if it's for mentors or for mentees. Mark, you know? Contributors. So we did the mentor okay. summit, the mentor session in December. So the launch for the con potential contributors will come in January or February. And yeah, there's right now it's the usual set of challenges, which means We've got interest from people, but not enough mentors. And that's been a consistent story every year, right? We we have far more interested contributors than we, we will ever have mentors simply because contributors get paid and mentors don't. <laughs> and, and there's no shame in that, right? That's That's yeah. the nature of open source. Yep. It's okay, but it's heartwarming to see what's happening in the Gitter channels. 
these days. Lots of people show real interest and even have started to work on proposals. Uh, for example, I saw something regarding LLM. Uh, somebody's working with Chris in order to start something ahead of time. That's pretty cool. That is really exciting, and I'm. Uh, it's really nice to yeah see like seeing all the activity like you said on the Gitter channel. Um, really fantastic to see it there. That participation, that response, that conversations that are happening. It's great. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the version documentation site for Jenkins.io. Um, so again, this is something that Chris Stern and Vandit Singh have been working on for some time now. Uh, pre before the um, holiday break, we had been I've been reviewing the, the version documentation site um, for content, for navigation, for anything that might have popped up. Um, and so I've submitted those issues. Uh, Vandi or Chris has gone been on top of these uh, really, really well. Um, most of the things that I had brought up were resolved already. There's still some stuff going on with some of the links and where they navigate to, uh, but it's being worked on. It's been addressed. This is uh, being worked on and, and uh, attempted to be resolved. Um, so thanks to Chris and Vandit for their constant attention and work on this. Um, we had originally, I think the discussion was happening originally that we were looking to launch it potentially in December. Uh, with these things that have come up, we had to push back on that a little bit. So now um, Chris and Vandit are still working on this. They are making sure that things are navigating properly, that the content is correct and present, everything like that. Um, but I think there's still a few more things that need to be done, verified, checked out. Um, Mark, I think, uh, would you have more insight on this that you want to share at this point? Sorry, I was unfocused. Ask your question again, Kevin. Uh, no, I was just saying the, uh, the version documentation is coming along. We were originally looking mm. for mid-December. We've had to push that back a little bit. Um, so there's still some review and, need, and uh, verifications that need to happen. But um, I wanted to just see if you had any other insights as far as like what Chris yeah, or Van Diet might have. I think with Vandit in the call now, that's that's a great chance for Vandit to comment. As I haven't done a recent review of the version documentation, but I saw that Chris Stern had uh, revisited the pull request asking for hosting for docs.jenkins.io. And that to me says that Chris's assessment is he thinks we're getting close to being ready to at least host it as a prototype. Vandit, do you want to comment? Uh, hi, Mark. Hi. hi, hi, Kevin. Hi, Bruno. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Chris just told me that uh, Jenkins IO version documentation is hosted on uh, GitHub repo of Jenkins Infra. I will drop the link in the chat. Uh, and the issue and the, all the issues Kevin Mark uh, pointed out that was a big he help because uh, it was really it was really difficult to uh, work on things and check them. Uh, since when you work on things, you it is it is it happens that you miss many things when you work on something. Uh, that one issue that is still open, uh, I, I, I will ask Chris to close it since uh, the PR uh, solving it has been merged. Uh, it's like three weeks ago. So uh, uh, after that, I'm currently working on the Gatsby side of things that will host the change logs, upgrade guides and the blog. Uh, change log and blogs is already done uh, in the Gatsby part. Uh, some things that uh, are still to be completed are upgrade guides and change uh, upgrade guides and security advisories. I think we will need to revamp them how we document security advisories or uh, I will try not to do that since uh, uh, before 2018 before 2018 we followed a different format format and after 2018 we followed a different one so uh, either one of, either we will unify we will uniformized all of them so they fit in or uh, we will i will come up with something that we don't have to change the documentation since the, the those, those are multiple files uh, 40 50 files that will be a lot of manual work because i don't think so it will be possible to uh, automate it and check it at the same time and we don't want to lose anything like that since advisories are important. So yeah, that's that's what all was. Thanks, Vandit. So so that's that's encouraging. So if we were to do another, now that we're hosted on Jenkins Infra, that means yep. we've got we've got a place where 
Kevin or I or Bruno could submit pull requests. We could also do do checks there and see, hey, is it looking the way we think it should, et cetera. So we can start this. This is certainly the next step in the evolution yeah. of the thing, right? Because yeah, now yeah. it's, we also need to check permissions to be sure that Kevin and I have administrative permissions over it and that all the other right people have those things. So very good. Yeah. So uh, it would be really awesome if, uh, if we can have some checks for two to three we weeks and uh, I'll be I'll be hyperactive during that time. Uh, I, I if if uh, I but uh, since I have exams in January, like complete of January, but uh, if that will happen uh issues start popping up uh i would definitely try to solve smaller ones but for the bigger ones i will give my time uh complete time in february so i wanted uh, that to be out there well and that's a good thing for us to know because my january is busy getting ready for the jenkins contributor summit that happens in early february kevin's may likewise be very busy that way and so if you if we know that Hey, you're focused on exams right now, but we could we've got a few weeks where we could do these reviews, sort of queue up or pile yeah. up things that you might look at. And then in February, you can take a look at them as your time allows. We certainly don't want to harm your ability to succeed in your examinations, but but would love if you can, if you we know that, hey, we queue things up and you can take a look at them as your time allows in February or even in March. Yeah, that would be perfectly. Uh, that would be perfect. I can just uh start uh working on things where I left off, or uh all or, or when the where the things are in the issues and anything like that. We can create one check one task list for linking issues because I know uh there will be a lot of them. So uh having multiple interface linking issues would be um spamming kind of spamming in the issues section. So I would uh if that happens, uh we should use a task list for that. Okay, well, so you tell us whatever yeah. you prefer. I'm, I'm my simple minded approach is typically okay, submit a, an issue, an issue per thing I find. But what you're saying is it may be better to group them into larger yeah, like themes can, and then check them off on, on a task list. Yeah, like have the we can have them on a ta uh, checklist in the issue section. We have we can create the, them and they we can update that checklist since uh. Whoever, since uh, admin, people with administrative uh, rights will can update existing comments and issues, so that will be one place where I can check where I can uh, start looking and uh, keep ticking off things from that list. But right. uh, so, if, if that's not uh, something suitable, I can I can manage. That's okay too. Great. All right. So so you're okay receiving issues, and you'll guide us if the issues are are too. If it, we're creating too many issues and sort of flooding it, you'll, yeah. you'll then you can guide us and say, "Hey, no, just put this in a task list. Here's this bigger picture thing. It needs a task list, and we can then that gives us an excuse to try GitHub GitHub task lists as well. My experience with them has has been limited and mostly about me deleting them from from pull request templates and changing them into simple lists. So good, let's try that. Yeah, awesome. That would be really nice. Great. Um, thank you so much, Randy. Sorry, uh, welcome as well. Also, sorry, I didn't see you come in there, um, but thanks for coming in. <laughs> thanks for sharing all that. I appreciate that. Um, quick question for you. Um, so for the issues that I had submitted previously, is that a, yeah, a they, good yeah, like all standard? Be, yeah, all have been resolved. Uh, one of them is still to be marked as completed, but uh, the PR solving that is linked uh, in the comment yeah. that you will find um, that uh, one. Oh, but I was just uh, I was just curious as to whether that was like a good format for submitting issues for you or if that was too much at once I tried to do no. that um, idea of grouping things together and provide the examples so that it was clear. Uh, but if it was uh, too much at once, I don't want to no, overwhelm no. anyone. The concern, the concern, my concern is not about how much issues pop up. It's just, uh, uh, if I if I if I can see them at one place, uh, like how you submitted, uh, Kevin. Uh, it yep. was easy for me to just pick up things, and uh, I create, I created, I like the all the interface linking issues were in one issue, and all the other UI related issues can be multiple issues. That's okay. But I'm just I'm just suggesting for the interpage linking issues because I I know there will be a lot of them. 
if we see uh that are uh, that just link you to another page on jenkins io doc site version site okay yep. that makes sense great thank you very much You're welcome okay um all right uh anything else on the version documentation uh bruno anyone no okay all right uh, so next up on the agenda is the adding sponsor attributions. Um, so we've been discussing this in previous sessions. Uh, just to give a recap, uh, one of our friends from JFrog asked about having a sponsor attribution or just being attributed to uh, being a sponsor. Uh, and so that kicked off the discussion of why don't we have a sponsors page or something specific for the sponsors. Uh, and so Basil Crow took it upon himself to create a sponsors page. It's right now in a draft state, but uh, it's a uh, mock-up of what it might look like. Uh, and we've been discussing potential tiers. Mark had used the uh, Olympic medals as the uh, intermediate, inter in between levels when, while we have uh, an anchor for the largest of support uh, and mirrors for specifically mirror, uh, mirror sponsors, um, where it would be, uh, you know, relative to a monetary support or uh, amount of support, whether it's monetary or otherwise, so that we can have it um, segmented in a in a way that makes sense and presents everyone's spot, all these sponsors in a fair and equal way. Um, Mark had mentioned earlier that uh, there was a recent update to one of the sponsors, I believe, that changed uh, where they would where they would potentially even sit in this sort of uh, distribution. So. Um, yeah, um, Mark, did you want to, or would you be able to share like what uh, you were hinting towards previously? Yeah, so, well, so, so one of the, if you, if you'll open the page, we can look at it, open www.jenkins.io, Kevin, and yeah. let's look at it and I can talk about what needs to change there. So scroll to the very bottom yep. and you see the list of our sponsors. However, the list is inaccurate. Because as of January 1, um, Red Hat is no longer a member of the Continuous Delivery Foundation, and therefore they're no longer a contributing sponsor, at, certainly not at that level, to, to, to justify their logo being that prominent on the page. And I discussed that with them, with their representative at a recent meeting of the Continuous Delivery Foundation Technical Oversight Committee, and they agreed that hey, there's with since they're no longer an active member of the a contributing member of this continuous delivery foundation, they should not be on this page at that level. Likewise, AWS has not donated to the Jenkins project in a very long time. And so having they didn't donate to the Jenkins project at all in 2023. So having them on that page, at least for now, um, is inaccurate. Uh, now we've got a request submitted to AWS asking for a donation. And so they may fix that within the next 30 days. And if they donate to us, we would certainly put them on the page. But those those are two examples. The other is DigitalOcean uh, donated over $20,000 last year to the Jenkins project and has again donated $20,000 this year to the Jenkins project for 2024. So they should be on that list as with their icon visible Etc. Now those are those are very short term. I think Basel's longer term view is the the correct one, and the governance board will review it next Monday and discuss it further. The reason that Basel's proposal is so much better long term is he's envisioning that we will have thresholds for the the various levels of sponsorship, and those thresholds will have some definition that will let us decide which which tier someone should be in based on their contributions to the project so that it's it's fair. And in this case, I like Anchor because CloudBees, CloudBees donates all of our AWS um, cloud costs are covered by CloudBees. So that donation plus um, many, many cloud, many, many Jenkins contributors are employed by CloudBees full time, including me. And therefore, there's there's an awful lot of CloudBees donation to the Jenkins project. So Definitely. so that that's a, the other is JFrog, for instance, Atlassian. Atlassian donates our 
our Jira instance, and that would be immensely expensive. We had to buy it ourselves. GitHub hosts thousands of repositories for us. So, mm -hmm. so again, these are there are plenty of sponsors that need to be recognized here with with sincere gratitude. Uh, Oracle there should be dropped. That's a good one. To, in this example, Oracle's Oracle's contribution stopped, and they mm -hmm. haven't donated any further, and so they shouldn't be listed here any longer. Got it. So, so did that did that answer your question? And is that, I guess, potentially more detailed than you ever wanted to know? Uh, it's exactly how much details I was hoping for, Mark. Thank you. That was perfect. Um, but yeah, no, that covers everything. Uh, that helps explain what I was curious about myself in terms of uh, what changed and what kind of uh, what major change happened. So uh, knowing that, um, should I submit a pull request to remove Red Hat from this from the homepage or Jenkins.io? No, if, if you you could um, actually, yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, if you don't mind doing it, it's easier than me doing it. That yeah. it's someone needs to do it, and the I'm the one who detected it because I'm part of part of the CDF technical oversight committee. But if you're willing to do it, that would be great. Yeah, I can I can definitely take care of that. I can. Would it be um would it be prudent to submit a pull request separately for Red Hat and AWS? In terms Let's of just do Red Hat for now. We'll leave AWS for another two weeks. See okay. what their response is to our donation request. If their response is that they donate, then they stay. Uh, okay. If their response is no, we won't donate, then they clearly get removed. They've they've okay. then made a very clear choice not to donate to the Jenkins project, and by that choice, we would remove them from the list. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, and I know I know that uh, one of the things that had been discussed uh, as far as like the mockup goes, um, partner gets a little messy. So having the Olympic medals, having the different tiers, is a little bit cleaner in terms of. Um, what that means and what that kind of signifies. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the best uh, way to go about things. And yeah, we'll take care of things. So, uh, so thank you again very much, Mark. I appreciate that. That helped clarify a lot of that. Uh, and then finally, the last thing on the agenda is integrating Docker Compose into the Jenkins documentation. Um, so first and foremost, thank you to Bruno for doing this. Uh, and incorporating Docker Compose into the tutorials, or uh, at least submitting the pull request to do that. Um, I've been going through the Maven one to verify and check, and everything looks to be good there. Um, instructions are clear. Things I've been able to do perform the um, Docker Compose functions uh, without any errors or anything. So things are looking really good there. Um, yeah, Bruno, uh, what would is there anything you'd like to share, pinpoint out? Um, um, well, I wanted to mention that it's far from perfect yet. We still have some issues to solve. For example, when somebody starts a tutorial, then does something else and then comes back three weeks later to finish it, uh, there have, there will be some uh, plugin update that won't show up, for example. Uh, so there are still some maintenance things to do when somebody starts uh, Jenkins Instant and then uh, continues a few weeks later. And same for when somebody exits uh, the Jenkins instance, there are some things that stay, uh, but that should get removed, in fact. So maybe when somebody ends the tutorial, cleans everything up, and then restart a few weeks afterwards, that could also be some uh, old things laying around, like old plugins, for example. So I still have to... Uh, clean that up. But frankly, for somebody starting from scratch, never having start, started Jenkins in a way or another, finishing the tutorials and getting everything cleaned up, that does work. There are a few places where we could do better, explain things in a better way. But for that being, I think that's usable as is. But I'm not against ameliorating uh, the way it is phrased or presented. Mark already uh, found a few issues here and there. I corrected, but it could have been better corrections. So yeah, it could be merged. We can still wait. There is no hurry. Um, whatever. Uh, if you want to give it a thorough review, uh, Kevin, or make some adjustments, 
feel free to do so. As for the Python one, it is dependent on the Maven one because they share some files together, um, mostly the um, new prerequisite site, for example. So I don't want it to get uh, merged yet for this reason. And also because um, I think we have to um, modify the way we envision using Python 3 in Bookworm because it doesn't work the way it used to do. You have to use a virtual environment. And I'm not so sure this is what we are recommending in the tutorial. So I have to redo it from scratch on my machine and see if it's working the way it's supposed to work. So the text may be correct or not yet correct, I see. And we also may have to change um, the um, support repository, you know, the sample Python app something, which is in Jenkins doc organization. It may not be up to date uh, when it comes to newer uh, Python's requirements when using Bookworm. I hope I made myself understandable. Yes, totally. Yes. Um, you thanks. did, and you actually addressed a, a comment that was received in the Jenkins documentation feedback pages. This is oh, really? a, a, a on on each Jenkins doc, on many Jenkins documentation pages. There's an was this helpful to you link, and then it pops up a little dialogue that allows them to give feedback. And one of the comments was. Your Python example is Python 2. And what I think you're proving to me is no, it's not. It's Python 3. Good. So. Okay. So, and it was unrelated to your, to, to the real, the real challenges you're facing or the things you're doing with the Python tutorial. It just says that, okay, the person who submitted it was mistaken. It's, it's not Python 2. You, you are, you were doing, you've done all the things you did with the Python tutorial were certainly with Python 3, not with the obsolete yes, and no longer supported Python 2. Yep, great. So whenever the Maven uh, PR gets merged, uh, feel free to have a look at the Python one. Great. Okay. Thank we'll you. Thank so you so Thank that you. really gives us two things that Kevin and I and, and anyone else interested in documentation can review. It's the version documentation site that Vandit's working on and the Maven tutorial that Bruno's working on. Thank yep. you. Yeah, both really nice pieces of work so far. Really excited about where they're at and where they're headed. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Bruno, for creating all that and putting it out and giving the opportunity. You're welcome. And thank you to Ashutosh Saxena and uh, Jean-Marc Mason. And uh, I forgot the name of the last mentor for helping with this project during J Google Summer of Code 2023. Leo Berviento. Got it. Beautiful. All right. Uh, that takes care of everything for today, unless anyone has anything they'd want to add or throw on there uh, for a last item. If not, uh, we are at time. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording in just a moment here. Uh, video will be available 24 to 48 hours from now. Uh, thank you all as always. Take care until next week. Stay safe. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Thanks again. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.